Welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, this is the training for extreme programming that we are doing here at our company. So welcome. My name is Mauricio, and I'm here to help us understand and implement the extreme programming methodology. So as we know, as a company, uh, we had a little bit of issues with uh, the Spiral method, so we're here to implement a new one. Here we go. As soon as I can move to the next slide. Yes, I, I was able to do that. Awesome. So why the change? What was wrong with Spiral? Spiral was a good methodology, but it required a lot of more effort, and I guess it didn't yield as much productivity as the new system that we're about to present to you guys will. Um, uh, what was wrong with Spiral? Once again, it was a little bit downside on the productivity. Uh, and it was not as prone to detecting many of the risks and errors that we are able to do with extreme programming. Uh, now, let's move on. Let's give you an introduction to extreme programming. Why would the company spend so much money and retraining and relearning a new methodology and implementing it? Well, in simple words, extreme programming is a lightweight and humanistic methodology to develop software. What do I mean by that? There's not as much uh, paperwork, I would say, sort of like that. There's not as much you know, documentation in terms of complicated meetings and schedules. And instead of that, it's more focused on the programming, on the planning and analyzing what needs to be done. And much of those things are done person to person, like in person. So it's a more humanistic methodology that yields to better... Uh, and more profitable uh, objectives. So, as I mentioned before, here are some of the benefits. It improves the software quality of the system and also improves the productivity because there is much more programming being done, there is much more testing, there's much more inspection, and overall, that improves the quality of the service. So. So let's go with this, the XP process, like what is the experience program, uh, extreme, sorry, programming process? Well, it has uh, basically one, two, three, four, five stages. Uh, I'm sorry, but the PowerPoint is a little bit wrong because it says one, one, two, three, four. But maybe that's a programming logic that you guys are about to figure out. If you can't figure out, you get a bonus in the end of the year. <laughs> so I guess step one, it's the planning game where we're going to use a couple of different phases to plan uh, the iterations of our system. Then the second is called pair programming, which will be mostly done by you guys and which will be most of the code that we're going to do is pair programming. Third, there will be a code review. Fourth, unit testing. And five, integration testing. And once again, I'm sorry for those numbers being all messed up, but I guess it's part of life. Would you agree? Awesome, so let's move to the next one. Okay, let's start with one, the planning game. What is the planning game? Well, the planning game is basically a meeting that we have in the beginning with our stakeholders, and we are gonna discover what needs to be done and what needs to be iterated in this process. So there is a couple of steps. The first part of this planning game is called release planning. And basically, and I'm gonna quote, it's a focused, it's focused on determining what requirements are included in the near-term releases and when they should be delivered. So the release planning is basically this plan where you're gonna think, okay, where are we at now? Where do we want to get soon in the near goal? And what is that needs to be done in order to accomplish that. So there are three phrases with it, the exploration phase, which I quote, in this phrase, the customer will provide a short list of high value requirements for the system, and they will be written down on user story cards, which are amazing. I absolutely love user stories, and I think it's one of the most effective ways to paint a picture of what the product needs to be. Second is the commitment phase, which is the commitment uh, in the, where business and developers will commit themselves to the functionality that will be included and the date of the next release. So there is, we, we found out through user stories, what are we going to do? Now is the commitment. When and how, when are we going to do those things? And the third, the steering phase is where 
the plan can be adjusted, new requirements can be added, or existing requirements can be changed or removed. So as we learned, much different from waterfall methodology and a little bit different from the spiral one is that we have the chance to be more flexible in our plannings because obviously things change and we do have to account for those things. And that's why we it's one of the big pros of the extreme programming, which is that we can uh, fle fluctuate, we can be flexible with the demands of the user as we discover with the user what's the best alternative for us. Cool. <laughs> The next part of the planning is called the iteration planning. And this plan the activities and tasks, this plans the activities and tasks of the developers. Sorry. Uh, in this process, the customer is not involved. Iteration planning also consists, right, of three phases. And here we go with those three phases. But before that, let me just talk about the iteration planning. So this is where the developers will branch those user stories and break down to tasks. And those tasks will be used to be uh, completed within a time limit that was set on the commitment phase. So here's the three steps of this iteration planning. The first one is called the exploration phase, which nothing means that it is the phase that the requirements will be translated to different tasks. The tasks are recorded on this task cards. That's the phase that I just explained. Second is the commitment where we obviously know it's when we make the commitment to achieve those tasks. And the third steering phase is our leg room for flexibility, change, and kind of like any changes on the original user story. So it's a very simple pattern. It's a very simple methodology with which the goal is to develop quality software, right? And this is our main goal. So let me talk a little bit about pair programming with you guys and in a little bit we're going to test this out and we're going to check it out um, if you guys are okay with that uh, a little bit of a pair programming so what pair programming is and I put four eyes are better than two uh, and I do not mean wearing glasses for those that have that kind of joke anyways um, so pair programming is programming is done with two developers using one computer one will be the driver and one will be the kind of the co-pilot and uh, there will be different responsibilities within each of them but the main focus here is that while one person is developing the code I mean they're doing it together but while one is writing the code the other person is thinking uh, it is suggesting it is watching out for mistakes uh, and that methodology, that process makes it so much easier to detect potential errors and provide a more quality proof and a better um, overall experience with programming, right? We have less issues because there's two experienced developers working on the same amount of code. So sometimes you might get stuck and spend one hour trying to figure out one thing that maybe another developer knew it already. So pair programming can be a very useful thing and from now on we're gonna be using this in our company. So for that we have a little assignment where we want you guys to take 30 minutes to recreate the game Tetris. Uh, and to do that I want you to pair you up with two people and you guys are gonna do it together. 30 minutes pass <laughs> and now also now that we prepared and planned with our pair programming let's do let's talk about the third step which is the code reveal and it says this is perfect said no one ever which is true right even though we might we now are gonna have two programmers doing pair programming and analyzing it together and writing code together there will still be a code review that will happen once a task is done or considered done and we're gonna go through again the code and we're gonna review this code and make sure that it works and make sure that it is testable you make sure that it it is battle proof you know you make sure that it is secure and this is gonna be done in a very uh, organized matter and code review is gonna work in different ways sometimes we're gonna have other pair programmers just switch tasks and analyze each other or sometimes it might be the client uh, not the client I'm sorry but the project manager will jump in and do as a business user because the project manager understands a lot what the user is and its needs so we're gonna do that in terms of code review also now more testing what is unit testing you may wonder unit testing is the testing that is done in sections or in parts we're gonna test this unit part of the code and this is another 
added layer of security and protection to our code to make it a more efficient and make it more um, productible, right? It makes it more, uh, it improves the quality of the overall system. So we're going to have this four uh, basic steps. The fifth is the integration testing, which means, wow, more testing. Yes, but integration testing means testing the software as a whole. We're going to make sure the product actually works. And this is going to be awesome. Now, we're going to have two types of meetings. We want to get rid of those meetings. And I know this is possibly not as accurate with the extreme programming methodology, but this is something that we feel like our small company needs to adopt since we are emerging. If we want to be like Google, we have to be like Google when it was a small company, which was probably at a garage. So we cannot throw expensive uh, time and consuming so much energy of the team with meetings. So we separated this into two basic meetings and we are calling them kickoff meeting and iteration planning. So what is the kickoff meeting, you may ask? Kickoff meeting is nothing more, nothing less than the initial meeting where we are going to do the planning game and we're going to plan everything. We're going to go through the steps and we're going to figure out what is the task and what is going to be our goal to accomplish in the software. So once that meeting is done, we're going to be separated into the pair programming teams and we're going to do the tasks and we're going to work on them. And once every two weeks, we're going to have, or three weeks, or we're going to establish this depending on the process and the project. Uh, we're going to have an iteration, iteration planning, which will be basically, we're going to plan our next steps. So it will be kind of a kickoff meeting, but already on the existing project right and yes it will be at the beginning of every project and we're talking about the kickoff meeting as i mentioned before people attending will be the developers and the project manager there will be an agenda with project goals and the goal will really be to accomplish the planning game and we're going to be able to break this down into tasks for our developers then our iteration plannings, we're going to happen every Monday at 8. I want everybody on the meeting Mondays at 8, which means that probably you're going to have to go to sleep early on Sundays. And the software engineers and the project manager, again, will come together to plan our next iteration. What are the next achievable goals that we want to accomplish with our service and where and how we're going to do them? It's going to be Monday at 8. And it should last as long as it is needed, but probably not more than like, you know, one day of planning. And probably nothing less than like five minutes. So now let's talk about the document. Amazing document. Something that I love is user stories. Why? Because sometimes when we use system requirements, we are too focused on the system. Like, oh, the system would be cool if it had this. The system would be awesome if it had this. But really, the whole goal, the purpose of our software development is to attend to the users. So the user stories are really, really the core of what will be profitable for us, what will be beneficial to our customers, and what will bring up the good money. <laughs> and the design document, it's a special document that might not be completely related to the extreme programming methodology, but I decided to use that as a tool uh, to help designers, I mean not to help designers, to help programmers to understand an overall look and feel and functionality of the project. User stories are great for that, don't get me wrong, but sometimes it is needed a little bit of more discrete, discrete direction to the project and design documents are just perfect for that. <laughs> so let's do now roles. What are the roles that we are going to have in our projects from now on? So uh, as we are a small company, we are only going to have four roles. The first one, software developers. Everyone that writes code is a software developer. And I encourage you to learn testing. I encourage you to learn all types of programming so you can become a battle I don't know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can become an experienced and versatile programmer. We cannot afford to buy, to, to pay for quality assurance software developers, programmer software developers, unit testing software developers. We are a small company. We can't afford that. We, we need everyone knowing everything. 
right? We need Joker cards in this company if we want to thrive. So everyone will play the roles as software developers, and you're going to be responsible for the development of the project. The second role is called the project manager, which will be the person obviously related to the business side and the dev software development side, managing both parts and making sure that the project is running smoothly on schedule and that the developers are well taken care of. Stakeholders is basically the people responsible for this project on the business side and who probably will give us the money. And designers will be those that I hire, the, probably one person that I hire to help you guys out with um, the prototype or I guess the design document where I kind of show you a little bit of the direction that the user stories are taking us. Great. So there are three checkpoints that we need to be aware of, and we're going to discuss them uh, thoroughly. And one of the checkpoints is the code review, where we're going to go, you write a piece of code, you complete a task from the user stories, and you go in and you check and you review this code to make sure it's workable. It works. It's simply now, make sure there is no flaws, make sure there are uh, no problems there. Unit testing is when we test one part of that code and make sure it works. And integration testing is when we test the whole system as a whole. Right? Those are the three checkpoints that are very important to the success of our project. And then, now we're going to, thank you, by the way, thank you very much. And now we're going to discuss questions. What questions do you have? Bum, 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 bum. If you don't have any questions, uh, we're going to just now do a little practice. And I have this small project where we're going to rebuild Tetris. But now we're going to actually work through each step and going to iterate that way. Thank you very much. These are the references. This is not something I made up with, made up. But it is something that is, has been used and has been proven to be effective. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And now we're going to turn to questions and we're going to do a little project when we're going to go through each one of those steps. Thank you very much and have a wonderful life.